I saw once a plague strike northern lands of ice. It was so terrible that not the oldest man among us could remember the like. Hundreds died. The sickness took nearly every person younger than forty and many older. And where dying mothers gave birth, the marks of the plague were on the babes as they came out of the womb. Bodies piled up. No one was laughing. And they knew that she was not like that. Northmen speak of a death moon, a light shaped like a half moon that appears inside a house and goes around the walls. I once saw the death moon appear at a farm, and first the shepherd dies, then a guest dies, and then the farmhand, and then the farmer and six of his men drowned at sea. If you see the death moon, and beware, because there will be death in that house. She did it. She did it. You fixed the bridge. She fixed it. You passed the trial. Get well, to the house. Done. You succeeded.
Genoa. Come to me. Where are you? I'm here. I'm right here. Are you in there? Come out if you want. Find him. You have to find him. The runes. Focus. Focus on the runes. Shano! Shano! What happened? They're blaming me for the plague. They say that I'm cursed. What if they're right? How would they know such a thing? Are they gods? None of us are. They're just people. Good people, but they're scared. They're afraid of what they can't see. Like children scared of the dark. They make up stories to fill the void. That doesn't make them true. What if my father was right? You have to step out of this darkness. Let them see who you really are, like I am. You're not a monster. Without you, the 
this darkness has made me a monster. What if this is pointless? What if you're wrong? Oh, this has nothing to do with the sword. What if we're wrong? The sword will never be lost. <laughs> what if this is the end? It's just a trick. You've been fooled before, you could be fooled again. I want to tell you a story about a god of the Northmen called Baldur. The second son of Odin. He was beautiful, good and wise. He was fair of feature. He spoke fair words, he gave fair judgments. Light shone from him, only good things were told of him. Yet he was the first of the gods to die. Is broken. There's no way you can fix it. What do you do now, sir? The Northmen tell this story about the death of Baldur. It begins with dark dreams. Night after night, Baldur dreams of his own death, and the gods fear for his life. So Baldur's mother makes everything in the world. Fire, water, iron, stone, earth, wood, beasts, birds, serpents, poison, sickness. Swear an oath not to harm her son. One by one, they each make their vow. He loves you. Neither weapons nor wood will injure him, Baldur's mother boasts. Only Loki, father of Hela, the mistress of death, is not amused. Through it. It's dangerous. Follow it. What's behind the gate? Where will it take you? It's not safe. Was it worth it? Dillian, there he is. There he is. What are you waiting for? Quick, find a way. Find him. Go. Dillian, don't lose him. Way too many times. You can always let him disappear. Dillian, there he is. Quick.
The world once seemed so simple. Black and white. Darkness and light. Narrow dividing lines of our own making. Dillian taught her to see further. To peek through the cracks and see the worlds of color stretching away from the gloom. And Senna explored new paths into the unknown. Dillian's in the tower. Mm. He's there. The gods feast and rejoice and amuse themselves by throwing spears and stones at Baldur, striking at him with sword and axe. But he comes to no harm, whatever they do. The gods never cease to wonder at this great marvel. But Loki shapes himself into a woman and asks Baldur's mother, is it really true that all things promise to keep him safe? I did not ask the mistletoe, Baldur's mother confesses. I thought it was too young. Oh dear. Loki makes a dart out of mistletoe and goes to the gods as they throw things at Baldur. The blind god, Hoth, was there. Loki asks him why he wasn't taking pollen. Hoth says, I cannot see where Baldur stands, and even if I could see him, I have no weapon. Loki replies, Here is a wand. I will tell you where he stands. And Hoth throws the mistletoe at Baldur. It pierces through him, and to everyone's horror, Baldur is killed. And for this, Hoth is slain. Dillian doesn't know who killed him, but we do. Nobody will love you. 
The Northmen tell how the gods mourned Baldur. His body was to be burnt on his ship, but they could not manage to push it into the sea and sent for a giantess to do it. She comes riding a wolf and has vipers for her reins. She pushes Baldur's ship into the sea with such force that the ground shakes and the rollers burst into flames. When Baldur's wife sees his body carried onto the ship, Years had passed since she left her father. She trained hard alongside her friend, Dillian. She saw things no one else could. Patterns, shapes, movement. An intuition that made her an exceptional warrior. Friendship turned to love. But the shadow of darkness never let her go, and she was caught between two worlds. That of Zinbel and her past, and Dillian, her future. What if they're all about wasting your time? Just two realities minute minute tearing at her soul. <laughs> what does she think she's doing? <laughs> you special. She thinks she can <laughs> They mean nothing. Overcome with grief, the gods send Hermod to ride to Hell and ask Hela to let Baldur return home. All the gods are weeping, he says. Are they? asks Hela. We shall see if he is truly missed. If everything in the world will weep for him, he shall go back to the gods. But if even one thing refuses, Baldur stays with me. The gods send messengers everywhere. Weep for Baldur, weep him out of hell. And everything wept. Men, beasts, earth, stone, trees, metal, everything. Except for a giantess they find in a cave. Baldur was never my friend, she says. Let hell keep what she has. The Northmen say that the giantess must have been Loki in disguise.